how do I describe this episode of Call of the Night? Besides an unparalleled vibe. Like, I don't, I don't want to repeat myself too much with this, but this show is insane. The presentation of this series is honestly, like, ridiculously insane, guys. I have to stress that. I can't think of a series that has transcended its source material so much, as much as Call of the Night. Like, the unparalleled waviness and vibes of this series is ridiculous. This episode also touched upon a lot of interesting cop topics and one of the core themes of this show that we'll get into and talk about. But as I said, let's get into it and talk about it because I could gush about this for a long time. I don't want to keep you guys. So let's talk about Call of the Night episode six today. So our episode begins where our last one left off with us meeting a disgruntled office worker named Shirakawa. Now... I can only imagine the stress that she goes under as a grown woman in a workplace that's dominated by a lot of men. I don't want to preach on this, but I can only imagine how uncomfortable it must be to be brought out into situations that you clearly don't want to be in that make you extremely uncomfortable, like going out for drinks with colleagues after work, and they constantly, constantly just throw out like sexual harassment things. Like, I don't want to preach on this, but I can only imagine how that must feel. How degrading that must feel. And as we can see in our episode, she is clearly stressed out by it. And the, her only solace is the quiet that she finds during the night as she's walking home from her job. And it's at this point that she remembers Nazana and the experience she had with her previously. Where... Nasna approached her like she always does, suspicious, but as you remember, she's a, mas a masseuse. So she's able to help her to relieve her stress a bit. And she remembers that, oh, I want to go there and talk to her again. And it's at this moment where she meets up with Ko there. Now, <laughs> if you remember from our previous episode, our boy Ko got roped into doing this with some... Uh, very titillating offers. Let's say that. Very stimulating offers to do this. And he swears. He swears that no, I'm not doing this for any bad motives. No, I'm doing this because I'm getting paid. I swear. I swear it's not anything else. I swear, guys. <laughs> As he's giving her the massage in Nazina's place. And, of course, Shirakawa is a little weirded out by this, as you would expect, to see a young guy here when the last time she was here was a woman. And she asks him, like, you know, how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I know it might be rude, but how old are you? And he says, oh, I'm 14. She's like, wait, what? what? Why are you working at this age? That's really weird. I never worked at this age. And they start talking with each other a bit. Ko starts explaining to her that, you know, I... I stopped going to school and all that. I And because I didn't use that energy in any other way, I had a really hard time sleeping at night. So I would go out during the middle of the night. And I was completely captivated by it. I was taken aback by just how different everything can be at night. Just how a, a change of day can dramatically change how you feel about a place. And I just want to hold on to that feeling. And him and Shirakawa start bonding a bit by that. Because you can tell that his words resonated with her when he said that. And his words actually made her reminisce to 10 years previously when she was his age. To where she first experienced this feeling too. Of how she felt like the world was just for her. Again, about how everything changes dramatically and how your perspective of somewhere changes just because of the change in scenery, just because of the nighttime, and just how incredible the feeling was for her. About how at nighttime you can kind of be yourself, how you can just walk down the middle of the street at night with no one there, how you can sing and just scream in the middle of the night, to so start singing down the road and no one can hear you, how you can just be free 
And she starts explaining to Ko about what it kind of means to be an adult in a way, you know. And as an adult myself, she's so unbelievably relatable. Because she starts explaining that, you know, my work itself is fun, but it's not fun to be around my colleagues all the time. To have to answer to higher ups, people. To have to go through these stressful situations all the time. To have to pretend like you're having fun with people. To pretend like you actually care. And just how unbelievably stressful that can be. And it's at this moment she starts breaking down. Like, it's... The world is tough, guys. The world is very tough and unrelenting. It doesn't care about how you feel. It wants you to contribute more and more and more. But in actuality, you really don't get much in return. And she starts breaking down, saying how she can't handle this anymore. Especially with a situation like hers, being a young, beautiful woman. I can only imagine how that would be. And it's at this moment she actually gets called by her boss to come into work. And just the utter despair she feels. Because it's like 2 in the morning, guys. Like, to have to go and do something like this. But she has to do it. As an adult with responsibility, she has to go do that. Something Ko doesn't quite understand just yet. And he sees the utter look of despair on her face. And he realizes that I can't let her go to this. Like, I can't. I have to show her this feeling again. That she hasn't felt in so long. I can't let her go to this work. So he actually blocks her from leaving. And calls Nazna into the room and says. We can't let her leave. No matter what. We She has to stay here for now. She has to have some fun. She's got to loosen up a bit. And of course Nazna takes this to the extreme. And throws her ass out the window. Which would be terrifying obviously. Now, Ko decides to do this because these two are incredibly similar. They are very similar to their core. And he realizes this. Like, she's me. Like, that's how Ko feels. So that's why he decided to do something like this. So he actually jumps down after her out the window and tells her that everything's going to be all right. And Nasuna catches them. And, of course, it's a visually stunning scene, of course. And they start speaking with each other when they land on the ground. And when they're on the ground, Ko explains to her that, you know, I just couldn't let you leave. I didn't feel right letting you leave. You shouldn't do something that makes you cry like that. And she kind of has to explain to him, like, Ko, you're just a kid. Like, I'm an adult. I have responsibilities. I can't just slack this stuff i can't just not do something because i don't like it like i have to do this stuff you don't understand what it's like to be in a position that i'm in and ko just he has to agree like yes i am naive and ko starts explaining to her how he wants to be a vampire of how yes i am naive i don't understand society and the social norms and all that but I'm free. And any boss that would call you in right now is crazy. You shouldn't have to do anything crazy like that. And he explains to her that if things are going to be crazy like this anyway, then you need to just have fun. And of course, it's not really that logical of an argument. It's really not. She even says that. Like, that's not very logical of you. Like, that's, that's kind of not correct. But at the same time, he's trying to show her that Life is crazy and unpredictable, but you have to have fun. You have to find the levity in it all. You have to enjoy life even though it's hard and you suffer. And that's the point he's trying to get across to her. And she even realizes that, saying, you know, this isn't logical at all, but I kind of envy you, Ko. I guess you could say the point of all of this was to show her to liven up to perk up a bit and to show her the call of the night to reintroduce her to that freedom that she felt that she feels like she doesn't have anymore because of the world and it's it's a tough argument to make honestly because i understand that as an adult i understand how illogical that is myself but this series let me explain this series to you guys in case you don't understand this series is kind of like a coming of age story for ko this is Ko. This story is about Ko meeting with 
all these different people, really, and how they shape him and how he shapes them. How through these interactions with different people, he comes more into his own and he helps other people to come into their own. Throughout the course of this show, we're going to see Ko interact with a lot of different people, all with much different personalities and much different views on the world. And their interactions are what's going to shape our story and Ko as a person himself. That is the real gist of our show. We're going to meet characters very soon that you guys will understand what I mean even more in this series. And throughout this interaction with her, he gets her to understand that feeling again that she lost so long ago. That feeling of happiness and joy, of just freedom. And she's elated by this. But of course she tells him, like, you know, I can't do this forever, though. I have to go work and all that i have to go and do my normal thing like i'm a functioning member member of society like i have to and she says you know i hope you do become a vampire co and i'm kind of jealous of you i wish i could be too and co in that moment is kind of taken aback and he makes a declaration to her saying how you know if i can become a vampire at the end of all this i'll turn you into one too <laughs> and you can tell she was touched by that and she agrees to it and she goes on her way after that and of course Nazina tells him after the fact like you know that was a really bold thing to say right you know what that entitles we've been over this co and he's like yeah she's got to fall in love with me obviously for me to turn her into a vampire and co's like you know i'm good with girls and <laughs> it's not exactly wrong We'll, we'll see that soon enough, but that's not exactly a wrong statement. <laughs> and that's how the first half of our episode ends. Now, the second half of our episode is much, much more straightforward. With Nazna asking Ko, like, you know, why don't you figure something out for us to do tonight, you know? Why don't you pick a destination? I'm always picking the places and what we do. Why don't you pick somewhere? And they rack their brains for a bit, and Ko decides, you know, why don't we... Why don't we go to the pool at night? You know, why don't we go have a good time? And they're like, you know, that's hip, bro. That's that's freaking hip, man. Look at that. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> so they decide to go do that. And guys, let me just say this. The vibe of this pool is kind of wild. Let me tell you from personal experience that nighttime swimming is way different <laughs> than daytime swimming. Because it's filled with adults and the vibe is totally different. It's filled with alcohol and flirting and all that. And Ko is a literal fish out of water in this situation. He doesn't get what to do. He doesn't get where to look. <laughs> For someone of his age, this is a, a titillating experience, I guess you could say. <laughs> and you know, like I've said previously, he doesn't really get emotions. He doesn't understand himself again this show is about him kind of discovering himself and figuring out like his own emotions so uh, he's kind of overwhelmed in this situation and of course he starts seeing nasna a bit different here he's more conscious since our previous episodes of her being around that she is a beautiful girl after all so <laughs> he starts getting nervous and all that and he sees that other people are flirting with her or going after her. And he starts feeling an emotion he hasn't felt before. Jealousy. But of course, he doesn't understand this. He's like, why, why am I getting so irritated right now? Like, what's going on? Like, why am I getting so upset by this? And of course, her seeing this kind of makes her do it even more. <laughs> kind of to egg him on a little bit. And a fun fact, actually, the two guys that are hitting on her in this scene are actually Creepy Nuts, the people that do the music for this series, the opening and ending song and the OSTs and all that. They are actually the group that does the music for this show. That's, so that's a cool little cameo, actually, that they got them in there. And Ko seeing this, he, he don't like it, obviously. He actually storms up there and drags her off. But that's a part of her goal, of course, because in our previous episode, she even said, like, I want you to feel every emotion when you're with me. Anger, jealousy, 
happiness, joy. I want you to feel everything. <laughs> and as they're walking away, Ko is kind of sulking, as you would expect. <laughs> She's like, what, are you mad? You mad I did that? And he's like, you know, I didn't... I, You know I hate giant crowds like this. And I, the pool was just noisy and... It was filled with a bunch of people, and I just didn't like it at all. I guess you could say he didn't like the vibe of it. And, you know, Nazna feels a little bad about that. So we get a really cool scene where the amazing song starts playing again. And let me tell you, when I was watching the episode, guys, and the one song starts playing again, I'm like, yo, let's go. Because it's you know it's a vibey scene when that song comes on. And she picks him up in the air and actually takes him to the uh, his school pool, actually. And says, you know, you want to go swim in here? And, and dive bombs him into the water, you know? And it's a really cool visual scene, actually. And in this moment, she says, you know, I'm sorry for this. I keep always messing with you. Just showcasing that they do have a good relationship with each other, you know? And she apologizes. And Ko starts thinking to himself, like, you know, like, what are these emotions I feel with this girl? Because it's not love yet. It's not. He's feeling things he's never felt with her before. And he's like, if I ask her how I felt tonight, would she know? Would she answer me? As she ends up sucking his blood there. And that's how our episode ends, you know? Like I said, I think the first half of this episode is a very important part, actually, even if it doesn't seem like it, because it really shows the core themes and what this show is really trying to do. And our second half is just more vibey stuff, which I'm perfectly fine with. I like that chapter personally in the manga, so seeing it animated was very well done. But you guys let me know what you thought of this episode down below. Again, this show is just unparalleled, like vibes and just the definition of a mood <laughs> visually stunning the music is fantastic it's just it's hard not to compliment this series this series just goes so above and beyond its source material it's insane but you guys let me know what you thought of it down below again we're going to get into some very important characters soon in our series that if you guys are complaining that the show doesn't really have a plot, your, <laughs> your worries will be answered. Let's just say that. But again, let me know how you guys feel down below. And that'll be it for today's episode, guys. You know, this show always puts a huge smile on my face. I wasn't even having a good day today, frankly, to be honest, at all. I was in a really bad mood. But yet again, I come and watch this show. And look, look how I'm beaming now, you know? So... Until next time, guys, I hope you have a great day, week, month, and year. And until then, deuces, uh, and always just remember to smile, you know? I'll see you guys next time.